Hello everybody. Well, the countdown to Christmas is really happening, isn't it? I have so many things going on that I'm having trouble keeping them all in my head. But one thing I must do today is make snowball cookies. These are those wonderful little round cookies that have lots of pecans, lots of butter, and lots of confectioner's sugar in them. I made them last year, so I'll put a link up there to last year's video. I don't need to show you how to make those again, but if you need a treat to take to a party or gifts for people, boy, these are just the best cookies if you love pecans. And I have all these pecans I need to use up, so I'm gonna make a lot of these. However, I made another dish at Thanksgiving that I never did share on here, so I'm going to share that next. And then, um, and that's sweet potato casserole. And this is not the one with the marshmallows on top, which I personally do not prefer. This is a much yummier recipe. Oh, real quick, before we do that, let me show you what I'm cooking for supper tonight. This was a big old chuck roast that I put in there frozen this morning. Okay, it was frozen solid. I covered it with um, some water and a lot of beef uh, broth. Now, it's better if you do half red wine. It really is, but I didn't have any wine. And then you add lots of different um, spices, oregano, they said savory, I put some Mrs. Dash in there, a bay leaf, salt and pepper, um, and then you bring it to a boil when it's still frozen in that big pot. And then you boil it for about five minutes, then you turn it down to a simmer, and you cover it, and you cook it all day long for like eight or nine hours. Now this is not as huge as some, so it won't have to cook that long, but by supper time, that meat will be falling apart. I'm gonna serve it with some egg noodles on the side and probably some peas or a salad, and that's supper, so I don't have to worry about supper all day long. Isn't that great? Sometimes I forget to video things until I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm watching uh, YouTube today. This is Amy and Mark at a, it's a chateau video. It's Thanksgiving day. Adam is down at the church and he is cooking um, for our Thanksgiving dinner. I'm finishing up a little painting there that I need to fix. But yesterday I went to the printers and I got my cards that I got printed. So here is the jellyfish. And it comes with matching envelopes. I think these are A4. Is that right? And here's the geraniums. I was I was down to my last two packs of geraniums, my last two packs of jellyfish. I was totally out of the sunflowers, so I got some more of those. Got 50 cards of each one of these. And got some more violets. And I also got some... Of the turtle. Let me go get the turtle. So here's the turtle. Isn't he cute? This is the first time I've gotten cards printed of the turtle. So I'll put them in packs of five with matching envelopes and sell them at the market for ten dollars a pack. And they've been selling better now than my hand-painted cards, which is a bit of a surprise, but very fun. So that's what I'm doing this morning before I make my sweet potato casserole and go down to the church and help finish things up because we have 33 people coming for Thanksgiving dinner this afternoon. Isn't that great? It's still Thanksgiving morning. My sweet potatoes are baking in the oven. It's gonna take them a long time because they're really big. Um, I went and tested them. So the next thing I have to do uh, to get ready for sweet potato casserole is crack pecans. And I wanted to show you um, what I found when I cracked, oh, 20, 20 or 25 pecans. Let's see what we got. Yes, I'm actually doing this in my studio. Okay, so here's, now this is just, I'm really trying to do just enough for my sweet potato casserole. I'm not doing any additional today. So here are the ones that I cracked. This is really what you want to see is this beautiful golden meat on the inside. My cracker does a pretty good job, I must say. Um, some of them are, like this one is just a little bit dried out, but not too bad. And of all the ones I cracked this morning, only this one was kind of black on the inside. And this is the only one I found that has a little, where did it go? There, has the little hole on the inside where the pecan weevil came out. So um, anyway, that's not too bad. I think that's pretty good average. So I'm going to 
go ahead and pick these. Let me see, I've got a little knife in here. I keep this in my studio for doing art stuff. Um, this is the most tedious part of it, but because I don't really want um, intact halves, then I can just have little pieces and I'm fine. You really have to get all the little stuff out there. Okay. Well, I'll be doing this for the next half hour while I watch a video. It's 18 minutes later and I have a lovely bowl of pecans. That's probably <clears throat> a cup at least, if not more, which is on um, that in addition to what I did the other night is just about perfect for this recipe. Now I really am finding that this little teeny paring knife is just perfect for doing this. It um it allows you to you can slip it underneath a piece of pecan that's in the shell and kind of pry it up and it works really well because the pecans are still they're kind of they're still a lot softer and more pliable than the shell is and um it's just just really really a, a useful tool to have so that's the latest with the pecans and i've tasted these and they are so wonderfully sweet and delicious it's great to think, considering how expensive these are in the store, that I have these straight from my yard. I want to take you really quickly through this recipe. Here is the list of ingredients. I'm doubling this recipe. Now that is the casserole part. And then at the bottom, this is the topping you put on it. This is not the sweet potato casserole with the marshmallows on top, which I'm not a fan of. So I've been baking these two very large sweet potatoes for several hours this morning. I'm going to put this recipe together and then take it to the church and bake it there so it'll be warm. But I need, I need four cups of baked mashed potatoes, uh, sweet potatoes, excuse me, because I'm doubling the recipe. And I need a cup and a half of brown sugar. There's my brown sugar. And I have a cup of melted butter on the back of the stove. I'll also need, oh, what does it say? About a half a teaspoon of cinnamon and a dash of salt, a teaspoon of vanilla, and then it requires, the recipe requires a cup of orange juice, liquid orange juice. I'm going to, of course, make two cups, so I've got some frozen orange juice there. And what's that last thing? Oh, and a quarter cup of sugar. Okay, so I've got another little container of sugar up there. So that's just the casserole section, and I'll be doing this in my mixer. Now I've put the sweet potatoes, the melted butter, and the brown sugar into my mixing bowl, and I'm going to go whip it up. I've added my cinnamon and a little bit of salt to that, but those sweet potatoes were fresh out of the oven and were so hot that I don't feel safe adding my egg yolks to them yet. They might cook them. So I'm going to put in some of my orange juice, which is quite cold, to cool this mixture off. So I added my egg yolks and I vaguely was successful in keeping my um, egg whites without any contamination from the yolks. But you only have to whip them up to a foamy state, not to any kind of peak. So I did do that by hand in a separate bowl over there. Um, and then you add the white sugar, which in this case was a little bit less than a half a cup. I'm doing a little bit smaller. I'm cutting all the ingredients just a little bit because my potatoes didn't quite reach four cups worth. So now I'm just folding in the egg whites. You're supposed to do that gently and then pour all of this into a greased casserole dish, which I'll do. And then I will get my topping ready in a separate container and take it along with me so that when I'm baking it, I can add it in the last few minutes. It looks lovely. And I was just about to cover it with saran wrap to keep it from spilling in the car when I transport it. And then I looked on top of the refrigerator and discovered an empty spot where our saran wrap usually is because my husband has taken it to the church which makes sense, he needs it for stuff too. So I have to come up with a way to cover this. I could use aluminum foil. Boy, I don't know. I'm gonna have to ponder this. All right. So 
So here's my solution. I do keep wax paper because occasionally it comes in handy. So on top of my crumble, I just used a rubber band. But look what I did on my casserole. <laughs> I'm using those little clips that everybody uses for sewing. Isn't that great? I think it might work. It's better than just carrying it without any cover at all, don't you think? Here is Adam's smoked turkey, fresh off the smoker. Here's a pan of his beautiful rolls. And this is the main turkey that um, a lady in our church baked. She's got, there's lots of liquid in there to keep it moist and she's got it in a bag with all kinds of yummy stuff and lots of butter. I can't wait to dig into that. Everybody pitched in in the kitchen and helped with the carving and the preparation. This is the buffet for the regular food. This is the buffet for the desserts. It was nearly as big. That's my plate and the sweet potato casserole is at three o'clock. <laughs> Here's our table of 34 people from the community and our church. And we had so much fun. It was a great day. Yeah, we had so many pies left over. It was a little outrageous. We all went home and took naps. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you have a wonderful Christmas week. I'll see you again in a few days with my Christmas video. Thanks for stopping and do try that casserole for your Christmas dinner. It was wonderful. Bye-bye.